Here's another example, 2 and 1 fifth plus 4 and 2 fifths. Notice here that the denominator is 5 in both cases. The fact that the denominator is the same in both of those numbers makes this one pretty easy. Let's rewrite the problem such that we have um, improper fractions instead of mixed numbers. So 5 times 2 is 10 plus the 1 is 11. So I have 11 over 5. 5 times 4 is 20 plus the 2 is 22, so I have 22 over 5. And 11 over 5 plus 22 over 5 is 33 over 5, and that's my answer. I can rewrite that as a mixed number. That's 6 and 3 fifths. And another example, this time the denominators aren't the same, so we have to rewrite them as improper fractions and make the denominators the same. So 2 and a third. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So that's 7 over 3, plus this, 4 and a fifth. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 1 is 21. So I have 21 over 5. Now the common denominator will be 15. So each of these fractions will be rewritten with a denominator of 15. I have to multiply 3 times 5 to get me 15. So when I multiply my 7 times 5, I get 35. So I have 35 fifteenths. And in this fraction, my 5 has to be multiplied by 3 to get me a 15. So the 21 has to be multiplied by 3 to get me the numerator, 21 times 3 is 63. So I have 35 fifteenths plus 63 fifteenths, and that equals 98 fifteenths. That can be converted to a mixed number, and it's 6 and 8 fifteenths. Three and a half minus one and two thirds. This is a subtraction problem. All the previous examples we did were addition problems, but we'll attack this one the same way. We'll convert the uh, the mixed numbers into improper fractions, and then make sure we have a common denominator, and then we can do the subtraction. So three and a half. The three times two is six, plus that one is seven. So I have seven halves minus, here I have 1 times 3 is 3, plus 2 is 5, so I have minus 5 thirds, 7 halves minus 5 thirds. I can't subtract the 7 and the 5 directly because they're unlike fractions. I need a common denominator, and you can probably see it will be 6. Instead of 7 halves, I'll have 21, six, 21 over 6. And instead of 5 thirds, I'll have 10 over 6. And now we can subtract. 21 over 6 minus 10 over 6 will be 11 over 6. And that's equal to 1 and 5 sixths. Four and seven tenths minus two and one sixth. Well, let's start by rewriting the problem such that we don't have any mixed numbers. We'll convert these to improper fractions. 10 times 4 is 40, plus the 7 is 47. So I have 47 over 10, minus the second number is 6 times 2 is 12, plus the 1 is 13. So I have minus 13 over 6. Now I need a common denominator, and you might see that it will be 30. I could use 60. That comes to mind because 10 times 6 is 60. But 30 is better because it's the least common denominator. And you can see that 30 is a multiple of 10, and it's a multiple of 6. So to get from 10 to 30, I had to multiply by 3. So what goes here? is the 47 multiplied by 3, and that's 141. 
to get from the 6 to the 30, I have to multiply by 5. So 13 multiplied by 5 will go in the numerator of the second fraction. And 13 times 5 is 65. So now I have 141 over 30 minus 65 over 30. And that's equal to 76 over 30. And 76 and 30 are both even numbers, so I can reduce this fraction. That's 38 over 15. And I can write that as a mixed number. 38 over 15 is the same as 2 and 8 fifteenths. Here's another subtraction example. But in this case, one of the numbers is a regular number, a whole number, instead of a mixed number. Well, to do this, we just write them both as fractions. So instead of 6, I'll write 6 over 1. And instead of 2 and a fourth, I'll write 9 fourths. And you should see how I got that. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 6 over 1 minus 9 over 4. Well, the least common denominator is clearly 4. 6 over 1 is the same as 24 over 4. 24 divided by 4 is the same as the 6. So I have 24 over 4 minus 9 over 4. And that equals 15 over 4. And that, of course, can be written as a mixed number, 3 and 3 fourths.